What up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the New Jersey Report. I'm your host, Pablo, and joining me as always is Mr. Brian Schultz. Brian, Ahsoka is done. Uh, we have done a couple of shows, I believe, on our excitement towards seeing Ahsoka, some of the things we saw in Ahsoka, some of the things that they were hinting towards with regards to perhaps the future of the Jedi, certainly the future of Thrawn and the, the I'm, I'm, try, I'm gonna buy the book because I never read the book. I'm gonna, I'm gonna buy the book so that me and my son can read it. Um, one of the common things, Brian, and I think is unfair for people to do, is to compare Ahsoka to the excellence that was Andor. Uh, but Ahsoka certainly, I, I think the word charming still is a fitting word for me, Brian, when watching it. Um, I was, a, but I have to say, I was a little bit disappointed in how it ended. Mm -hmm. I was a little bit disappointed in some of the fight sequences. 100% agree on Andor versus Ahsoka. No point in even comparing them. They're not intending to do the same thing. So first off, the objectives are completely different. Other than they're set in the Star Wars universe, that's where the similarity ends. I think Ahsoka, it's kind of like a, it's a bell curve show. I think it starts kind of slow. It really picks up quite a bit of momentum in the middle episodes. And then it kind of ends a little bit on a whimper. That's kind of how I would describe it. I think all in, it's a solid effort um that i generally enjoyed and i will be here for a season two which we clearly are going to get but i was disappointed in dave filoni in particular about his choices in the finale in the season finale kind of like what he chose to focus on what he chose to ignore what he chose to set up uh, I thought there was some laziness and some sloppiness that I just couldn't forgive given the way, given some of the high points that we had come in the earlier episodes. And I think the number one place to start to me is sidelining Balin Skull after, and Shin, after how much time we spent with them and with them lurking and chasing our heroes and what are their agendas and what are their motives to get nothing other than a single screenshot of both in the finale, to me, is an unconscionable, unacceptable writing decision. Yeah. You can't have a great finale. Like, automatically, to me, you cannot have a great finale if those two characters are neither part of your action nor part of your narrative at the end of the season. Let me ask you this, Brian, and, if, and uh, the, the people watching this show. Did you find yourself pausing to see how much time was left to see when this the show was ending? Because where is Balin Skull in them? What, 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 what are we doing there? Well, in my mind, I don't know if anyone else was doing this. I'm sitting there tallying and I'm like, okay, I see Ezra making his lightsaber. And I'm like, all right. So we've got Master Ahsoka, Master Ezra, Apprentice Sabine, Three force, well, Sabine's force we'll get to. Three force wielding, lightsaber wielding heroes. And we got Balin, and we got Shin, and we have Morgan Elspeth kind of reborn and empowered. I'm like, that looks interesting. That seems tailor made for a three on three epic force lightsaber showdown. That never happened and never will. RIP Ray Stevenson. What were other? What were some of the other things that you found to be uh, lazy? Sabine, and disappointing. Sabine, okay. that, that, to me, the, the rest of the finale that doesn't work relates to her journey as an apprentice. Like, how do you go from having no force sensitivity, no powers at all, to in the finale you're coming up with like a clutch? call the lightsaber to you. And then literally, how far does she push Ezra? She pushed him like halfway to the Star Destroyer. I'm like, I don't think Luke could do that at the height of his powers. And like, yeah. it, it just, it, it, Sabine started out as such an interesting character to me in the first episode. And it just felt like she got progressively more worse. 
difficult <laughs> to deal with to where it felt like they were using her as like a cheat code to get through the plot. Like whether to find Ezra, whether to execute this rescue, like to where I was just like, I really don't like this character and I don't like how you're using the character. And the character was much better in the animated shows. And yeah, I, I just felt like that was a massive failing. Um, and a weird thing too, because it was like at the beginning of the episode, Ahsoka and Ezra jump out to force push the ship from crashing. And I'm like, 10 minutes later, Sabine is executing the greatest force push we've ever seen in Star Wars. <laughs> And they didn't even trust her to like get out and help. I'm like, I, so lazy. That's sloppy to me. That's sloppy when you do stuff like that. Again, the force is being used so freely amongst people who, like when, when Luke was Luke Skywalker and on that journey and those talks from Yoda, those things were special. They haven't made that special again, you know? Well, they ruined that in the new trilogy, though. They ruined that in Force Awakens. To me. When Rey, I thought we were, when Rey uh, yeah. is able to get from neophyte to beating Kylo Ren in a matter of minutes, basically, <laughs> that's when it ended. Yeah. To me, that's when it ended. I And I thought we were on a path to re rediscovering and redefining what a, what it is to be a Jedi but the use of the force with characters that not a lot of not a lot of individuals know um, and have to go through the tedious journey of looking at rebels and and and, and all these animated stuff to get some but then when you watch that and then watch this, it's, it just it just looks like a live action version of that, which to me, I mean, I think that's one of the things that I've never really, I've tried to watch it and, and it just doesn't call me. And I think if this feels the same way sometimes, especially when it comes to, when it, ha when it has come to the lightsaber fight scenes, some have been great, mm -hmm. some haven't been. And it's yeah. just... Well, it was a shame because we got the mid... That's what I'm saying. The, in some ways, the peak of this show, to me, is the mid-season fight with Balin and Ahsoka and Shin versus Sabine in the forest. Like, that, to me, is an outstanding Star Wars set piece, which then should have led to the sequel fight being a step up. And instead, you know, episode seven, we get this tiny little rematch duel between Ahsoka and Balin, which is almost like a fake duel. And then that's it. Like her fighting Morgan in the finale was pretty disappointing. It's like Morgan's been there, but it's not like we've been invested in her as like the primary villain. So for her to become this like sword wielding spirit and witch, I'm kind of like, this is, this is a, this taking a spot from, this is Balin's spot. He needs to crash this part. And like, it just, I don't know. That fight didn't work for me. I'm more interested in Balin's Skull's Apprentice. Than any, than any, than any of the characters, than, than, than Ezra, than Sabine. I'm interested in her just because, more so, Brian, because there was that hint of confusion of what she was doing. Yeah, I agree. And there's a mystery there that I want to sort of see her go on. Or, or there's a journey there that I want to see her go on. I want to see where it leads. And we might see it. But like this show also was guilty of, you know, like with the, the bringing Ezra back home to Hera to me was like, well, wait a minute, wait, wait a minute. He's been gone for 10 years. He's marooned on this planet. And then suddenly he gets off the planet courtesy of the Star Destroyer. And then he steals a ship and he's back home. And I'm like, you could have made a whole season about what happened to him on this from when he's trapped on the Star Destroyer to try and to get back. That's an interesting story with a character that was being played pretty well. And I'm like, why did we just skip all that to give us this one reunion scene that was kind of felt, just felt sort of shoved into the season finale? Every reunion it. scene here was lackluster. Except for one. I think the one with uh, Ahsoka. The Ahsoka and Ezra one was okay. That yes. one, yes. Yeah, that one yes. was okay. But Sabine Ezra was not there was not much payoff there. Um, 
And now Thrawn was interest more than interesting enough for me to be like, I'll watch Lars Mickelson play that part a hundred yeah. times. And like, I love that he's got his chess board and like, you know, like people are going to criticize, Oh, was he really that like, whatever he had one objective, he accomplished it. He considers it a win. That's how Thrawn operates. I mean, to me, yeah. that's fine. That, that character yeah. is fine, but. Uh, What else, Brian, with regards to the fight sequences, anything you saw there that was disappointing? I mean, just uneven. I mean, like I said, I didn't love the lightsaber duel at the end. Um, you know, I just don't, I'm just not a huge fan of the, like I said, like the night troopers being zombies that were sort of unkillable was like a sort of a fun twist, I suppose, to make them more menacing than your average stormtrooper. But the reality is like watching watching Jedi cut through non force sensitive opposition is not after a while it gets kind of boring, right? Cause you know that they're overmatched and that's where I'm just like, you're taking away time from what like Phantom, right? Phantom Menace, say what you want about it. Phantom Menace understood at the very beginning of the movie, they have Obi-Wan and Qui-Gon cut through some droids for a couple of minutes. And then what do they do the rest of the time? They fight Maul. Cause that's what we need to see. They fight Maul in the desert and then they fight Maul for real, right? And the base, and it's like, that's still to me like the best duel that Star Wars ever put together, just shot for shot. Yeah. So I'm like, why aren't we, why aren't these characters doing that when you've given us the pieces to have what should be a really cool two on two or three on three or two on three type of fight? And they're gonna say, look, we're gonna save it for the movie. And And, and my counter to that is like, that's lazy. Let me ask you this. Do you think it's getting too fantasy? No, I mean, to me, this thing is still very Star Wars. Like to me, when they're when they're on the beasts charging the base and Thrawn rains the fire down on them. Like to me, that was kind of cool. I like that. That was like a very Star Wars type of set piece where it's like, all right, we got a creature, we've got terrain, we've got, you know, impossible odds for our heroes, but they're special heroes because they can use the force to avoid the black. Like, you know, I, that stuff is all this. This show had the spirit of Star Wars in it to me. Like it had the essence of Star Wars at a lot of points, the classic Star Wars. So I didn't have a problem with that. I just those set pieces didn't lead us to places I really wanted to go. And the things, the places I wanted to go, we didn't spend any time. We get the one shot of Balin standing in front of that statue at the end. And it's like, there's no explanation. That's not a payoff for his journey. And like I said, very unfortunate because I was shocked that Ray Stevenson was alive at the end of this, or sorry, that the character, not Ray Stevenson, the character was alive. I just always figured he was gonna go out like a boss at the end of this season. I thought I, mean, I I thought it would have been dope if his apprentice would have killed him because of something I don't know because again that character seems very interesting and we know Ray Stevenson rest in peace is no longer with us um, it's just they're introducing introducing a another layer to this um, for this character that we'll have to continue seeing and it won't be Ray Stevenson it'll be somebody else whom we'll compare to and be like ah, it doesn't feel the same but it's whatever right it's a bit it's 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 really a void I'm fascinated to see who they do cast for it'll be a while who they do cast for season two I mean it's probably something I've started to think about um, but it's hard. I thought Ray Stevenson really showed me a side of him I hadn't really seen in other roles, and it's going to be hard to unsee him uh, <laughs> in this part going forward. Even though someone will obviously step up and play it. That dude looked like a comic book. He looked perfect. But let us know in the comment section below what you guys think of the Ahsoka series and its finale. Um, more than any issues do you disagree or agree with what we've been uh uh saying with regards to how ahsoka turned out um the choices that they made to and how they told this story let us know what, in would, the you rate it? what would you rate it out of five two and a half yeah, i'm probably willing to go three but i think right in the middle of the middle of the range and i would probably yeah. tell people by and large go ahead and watch it i think you'll like the high points but 
yeah, I think you're going to be let down by the finale and they, it's up to them to pay it off in season two in the movie. But yeah, a little, little disappointed once again in these finales. Yeah. Uh, once again, that is on the comment section below. Hit that notification bell. Hit, hit subscribe to the channel. Uh, hit that like and subscribe button and we'll see you uh, next time on the Nerd Gym Report. The show goes on! Yeah!